sixth conference of the International Woman Suffrage Alliance was held in June 1911 in Stockholm, Sweden. It was led by the organization's president, Carrie Chapman Catt. The proceedings were inaugurated on Sunday the 11th of June in the Gustav Vasa Church. The welcome address was delivered at the Academy of Music by the president of the National Association for Women's Suffrage. There were 24 organized countries in attendance. One of the outcomes of the conference was the formation of an international men's league which was joined by New York, England, Holland, Hungary, Germany and France. Anne-Margaret Holmgren gave the Monday evening address. Ethel Snowden also spoke. On Tuesday evening, Selma Lagerlof spoke, saying, Woman with man by her side, has created the ideal home, it is now time that woman should cooperate with man, and together they can create the ideal state. Preparations The committee which had been appointed to prepare for the Congress and had been working for many months beforehand consisted of the Executive Committee of the Central Board of the National Suffrage Association and the Presidents of Subcommittees formed for different purposes. Signe Bergman acted as President, Axian Thorstensen as Vice President, Anna Frizzell as Treasurer, Nini Kohnberger and Elise Carlson as Secretaries. Axeline Virgin was at the head of the Finance Committee. The work of the Press Committee was directed by Else Kleen. Lily Laurent was at the head of the Committee on Localities. Lizinski Dyerson headed the Committee for Festivities. Ezelin Bohemian was the head of the Information Bureau. Alfhid Lam and Eva Anden directed the work of the 30 university students who served as pages. At the head of the Traveling Committee was Dr. Martin Wester Hallberg, who arranged the journey to Lapland. Proceedings The Sixth Conference and Congress of the International Woman Suffrage Alliance took place in the Banquet Hall of the Grand Hotel, Stockholm, 12–17 June 1911. The coming of Carrie Chapman Catt, President of the Alliance, had been widely heralded. She had been received in Copenhagen with national honours by cabinet ministers and foreign legations. In Christiania, she was met with a greeting from a former prime minister and an official address of welcome from the government and was received by King Haakon. In the midst of it all the woman suffrage bill came up for discussion in both houses of the parliament. The international president was escorted to the lower house by a body of women that crowded the galleries. After a stormy debate the bill to enfranchise the women of Sweden received a majority vote. In the midst of the applause Kat was hurried to the upper chamber, the stronghold of caste and conservatism. Her presence did not save the bill from the usual defeat. The Congress opened with representatives from 24 affiliated national associations and two committees, those of Austria and Bohemia. The government of Norway sent as its official delegate Dr. Christine Bonnevi. The list of delegates filled seven printed pages, the United States, the Netherlands and Sweden having the full quota of 12 delegates and 12 alternates, Germany lacking only three of the latter, while Great Britain, France, Denmark, Norway, Finland and Hungary had 12 or more. Six were present from Russia, Bulgaria, Serbia, Switzerland, South Africa, Iceland and Canada had representatives. Of fraternal delegates from other organizations there was no end. About 70 men and women among the members of five men's leagues for woman suffrage, in the United States, Great Britain, Netherlands, Hungary and Sweden. In addition to the spoken words letters and telegrams of greeting were read from societies and individuals in 12 different countries. The distinguished guests of the occasion were Dr. Selma Lagerlof of Sweden, who had recently received the Nobel Literature Prize, and Helena Westermark of Finland. Among prominent speakers were Mayor Carl Lindhagen and Ernest Beckman, MP, the Rev. Knut Henning Hazelius von Schaele, Bishop of Visby, and the Rev. Dr. Samuel Fries. The ushers and pages were women students of the universities. On the Sunday afternoon preceding the convention the precedent of all past ages was broken when Dr. Anna Howard Shaw preached in the ancient state church of Gustavesa. Sunday evening a reception was given at the restaurant Rosenbad to the officers, presidents of National Auxiliaries and Swedish Committee of Arrangements by its chairman, Bertha Nordensen. The official report of the first executive session Monday morning said, Miss Janet Richards, delegate from the USA, with an admirable speech, presented to the alliance from the state which had recently given full suffrage to women a gavel bearing the inscription. 
To the International WSA from the Washington Equal Suffrage Association, it was announced that national suffrage associations had been formed in Iceland and Serbia and they were gladly accepted as auxiliaries, bringing the number up to 26. The municipality had contributed 3,000 crowns to the Congress, which proved to be the largest ever held in Stockholm. Season tickets had been sold to 1,200 persons and other hundreds bought tickets to the various meetings. During the entire week the flags of the nations represented at the Congress floated from the flagstaffs that lined the quay in front of the Grand Hotel facing the Royal Palace, as far as the eye could reach. All the time Mrs. Cat was in the city the American flag was run up for her as a public guest wherever she went and the Swedish colors dipped a salute. The Congress was formally opened in the afternoon of 12 June with addresses of welcome from Anna Whitlock, acting president of the National Suffrage Association of Sweden, and the Honorable. Ernest Beckman, MP, President of the National Swedish Liberal Association, and response from the alliance was made by Crystal Macmillan of Great Britain, proxy for Millicent Garrett Fawcett, its first vice president. Anna Clemen, President of the Stockholm Suffrage Society, then presented the beautiful white satin, gold-embroidered alliance banner, which was carried by six university students in white dresses with sashes of the Swedish colours. Kat announced that the Alliance flag was now flying over the Grand Hotel where they were assembled. The banner was the gift of Lawton von Kromer, a pioneer suffragist of Sweden, and the flag of the resident Atlantic, Gulf and Pacific T. Co., U.S. A suffrage song written by K.G. Nielsen and the music composed by Hugo Alvin for the occasion was sung by the Women's Choir of Gothenburg, after which an official delegate of the government extended its greeting while the audience rose and the flags of the nations waved from the galleries. Kat received an ovation as she came to the front of the platform to make her address. It filled 23 pages of the printed minutes and was a complete resume of the early position of women, the vast changes that had been wrought, and the great work which the Alliance was doing. At the official reception given by the National Suffrage Association of Sweden in the evening, the guests were welcomed by Anne Margaret Holmgren, and their appreciative responses were made by Margaret Hodge, Australia, Gabriella Danzarova, Bohemia, Mrs. Daisy Minor, Austria, Miss Helen Clay Peterson, Denmark, Miss Annie Feruhelm, Finland, Madame de Witt Schlumberger. France, Dr. Anita Augsburg, Germany, Olga Unger, Hungary, Mrs. Philip Snowden, Great Britain. These were followed by a cantata beautifully rendered by the Gothenburg Choir, words and music by women. During the convention, Lieutenant Colonel W. A. E. Mansfeld of Holland made the report for its Men's League for Woman Suffrage, Dr. C. V. Drysdale for Great Britain, Jean Du Broy for France, Dr. Alexander Patai for Hungary, Frederick Nathan for the United States, and the founding of an international men's league was announced with Mansfeld as secretary. The reports of the work of the different branches and their discussion, bringing before the Alliance the experience and opinions of women from all parts of the world, were perhaps the most valuable feature of the conference. The most animated and vital of these discussions was the one of a political nature, divided into three parts. 1. What political work have the women of the enfranchised countries done, what is their relation to the different parties and how do these treat them? Have they any advice to offer? Led by Miss Hodge, Mrs. Louise Kielhau, Norway, Dr. Tekla Hulton, MP, Finland, 2. How can women's political influence be brought to bear most effectively on parliaments and governments? Led by Mrs. Snowden, Mrs. Anna B. Wixell, Sweden, Dr. Kith Schirmacher, Germany, Miss Richards, 3. What should be the relation of the suffrage movement to political parties in the unenfranchised countries? Led by Miss Aline Hansen, Denmark, Miss Rosika Schwimmer, Hungary, Madame Pichon, France, Mrs. Zenaid Mirovic, Russia. There was a wide divergence of opinion but at last a resolution was unanimously adopted that women suffrage societies do their best work when organized in a nonpartisan manner. Quote, in order to remove persistent misunderstanding a statement presented by Mrs. Catt was adopted explaining the wording of the resolution demanding the franchise for women on the same terms as it is or may be exercised by men, it declared that the alliance had on no occasion taken a position for or against any special form of suffrage but that the affiliated societies were left entirely free to determine for themselves which form they would demand. The alliance did not express an opinion as to what should be the qualifications for enfranchisement, its sole object being to establish the principle that sex should not be a disqualification. Eminent women speakers spoke in the Royal Opera House of Stockholm on the second evening of the convention. 
Cat presided and addresses were made by Miss Westermark, Dr. Augsburg, Mrs. Snowden, Miss Schwimmer, Dr. Shaw and Sweden's Selma Lagerlof. Another which differed from all that had gone before was the great gathering in Skansen, the Magnificist Park, where at 7 o'clock, from two platforms, noted speakers from ten countries addressed an audience of thousands. A dinner followed in the park house, Hagenloft, with fine music, and then in the open air the visitors saw the famous national dances and processions by the young people in the picturesque costumes of the country. Although the official languages of the alliance were French, German and English, a crowded meeting was held one evening in the People's House with the speeches in Scandinavian languages. It was opened by Mayor Lindhagen, an ardent advocate of woman suffrage. At another session the woman question in the Russian parliament was considered by Dr. Shiskin Yevon, the suffrage outlook in Bohemia by Miss Maria Tumova, recent candidate for parliament, the future of South African women by Miss Nina Boyle. A special meeting was held one afternoon in the hall of the Young Women's Christian Association. Mrs. Marie Stritt, Germany, me. Maria Verone, France, and Miss Macmillan were appointed to compile a pamphlet of information about woman suffrage in all lands to be used for propaganda work. The closing speech of the Congress was made by the international president at Salzjabaden. Topic. See also. International Alliance of Women.